He's coming soon, and that's what we've been talking about this Advent season, arrival. We've been celebrating the birth of Jesus, but we have been finding out that we can celebrate his arrival, but we need to be looking for his coming because he is coming back again. I don't know about y'all, but I'm fired up this morning. Somebody say fired up. Fired up. Some, some people get fired up when hearing about the word of the Lord. But it is good to be back with you guys today on this beautiful Sunday morning. The sun is shining outside. I don't even think I saw a cloud in the sky this morning. Beautiful sun, uh, Sunday morning. So we're on week, we're on our joy week up here. We've got the candle lit, and it's just Christmas is not too far away. Can you believe it? A week from Tuesday, or is it Tuesday or Wednesday? Tuesday, Tuesday a week from Tuesday. We're going to be opening up presents. The kids are going to probably have me up at 5 o'clock in the morning. Opening up presents. Then they're going to be wanting to go back to sleep. And here I am up all day already. But it is just a great time of year that we get to celebrate his birth. And uh, do we, do we, like I said, we've been looking at that. We're looking at his coming. Uh, when Megan was pregnant with Brady, we went to the doctor and they were going to do an ultrasound. And I figured it was probably going to be too early to find out what Brady was. If he was going to be, if it was a boy, if it was a girl. I, I figured it was going to be too early. So um, the doctor was doing his thing, and he had the little thing on her belly. You could hear the heartbeat and says, do you guys want to know what you're having today? I said, you can do that today? I thought it was too early. I thought it would be the next time. He said, no, I can do it today. So he got the little thing and he went oh he says you're gonna be having a boy Woo! we're gonna have a boy hey i love my girls don't get me wrong i love my girls there's nothing like girls but there's something about having a son that a daddy can jump up and say you know what at least my name is gonna live on one more generation there's gonna be a barns one more generation so you know i went home we we, we had a room that we had, we didn't know what color to paint it because we didn't know what we, okay, now I can get to work. I can paint it blue. I was a firefighter at the time, so I had blue, I had red, I had khaki in there. I had little fire trucks down. Megan's like, what about the doctor's wrong? I said, well, I'm putting my faith in about 90% that he's, we're having a boy. I says, but if something pops up and he comes out a girl, I'm going to have a lot of work on my hand. I'm going to have to change all this stuff. So I went into this mode as preparing for my son. And most of you know that feeling that once you had a baby on the way and you got to a certain point that you started preparing. You go and you, you put the crib together and you get into, the, into place. You get all the little things and you go around putting things in the light sockets even though it's not nowhere near time for them to worry about that air because they're not even born yet and you're putting things in the light fixtures but you start preparing for that child that new new creature to come into your family we're preparing for this and that's what we're doing church and we're looking at for this advent season we're preparing for his coming we're celebrating his birth but we were preparing and as we're looking at today joseph was promised a son Mary was promised a son. Abraham was promised a son. David was promised a son. And we see this throughout Scripture. And also, too, the world was promised a son. And we're going to be in Matthew this morning. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. And I'm going to read that for you this morning. Then we're going to go back and we're going to hit a couple of these sections here. We're going to break it up into three different sections this morning. But in Matthew chapter 1, starting in verse 18, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, 
he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. All this took, put, took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the, Lord, the, the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name of Jesus. Let's pray, church. Father, as we dig into your word this morning, Lord, use your word to pierce our hearts. And may your spirit just move within us this morning. Lord, we thank you for your precious son, in Jesus' name, amen. So the first thing we're going to look at this morning in verses 18 through 21, Joseph is promised a son. So this is Joseph, he's promised a son, and let's go back to 18 through 21. It says, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, so they hadn't sealed the deal on consummating the marriage yet. So, so here she was pregnant before that because Joseph, her husband, was a faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had decided to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because she has conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, which means Emmanuel, God with us. And he's going to save his people from their sins. So Joseph is promised a child. And here's, here's Mary pregnant she's pledged to be joseph's wife now joseph knows he hasn't had any relations with mary and here she is pregnant now according to the law of that time he could divorce her publicly he could disgrace her and get this she could be stoned to death she could have been killed right there on the spot she could have been taken out into the courtyard and people could have picked up stones and just threw out her until she was dead that was the punishment in that day to break this agreement. So here she was. She was pregnant. But the angel appears to Joseph in a dream. Well, well, well why didn't he appear to Joseph like he did Mary and Zechariah? He just appear in, in all of his glory. This is the way that he chose to speak to Joseph in his dream. He showed up in his dream, and he told him these things. And just like probably most guys, he probably woke up and said, you know what, that really wasn't real. But then he probably says, you know what, that was. I, I wasn't sleeping. I, you know, the angel spoke to me. So this is how the angel chose to spoke to him while he was in that dream. And this is what got me. You know, we have all this technology today. We go to the doctor when, when our wives are pregnant and they get all these ultrasounds. They can tell if the umbilical cord is intact. They can tell if the nutrients is getting to the baby like it's supposed to be. They can tell us if it's going to be a boy or if it's going to be a girl. They can tell us if it's got all ten fingers and toes and everything. They can do amazing things with technology today. But the angel told Joseph, he says, you're going to have a son. He didn't use an ultrasound. That you're going to have a baby boy. And Joseph is probably like, well, how do you know that? Joseph, he's an angel. He's showing up to tell you. He's proclaiming that you're going to have a son. Oh, and by the way, 
You're going to name him Jesus. Have you ever thought about how your parents came up with your name? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever thought about, well, why did my mom and dad call me Stephen? I don't know. I don't know where Stephen came from. My dad's name's Steve. My granddaddy's name is William. I don't know where Stephen came from. But then as I was, I was just meditating on this this week, I know where it came from. The Lord put that name in my mom and dad's mind, and it spoke just as your name. That's why your name is what it is, because God gave your parents that name. So your name is from God. Your parents might have thought they picked it out of a book, and they thought it was the trendy name, the top 100 names that's on the list, and they picked it out. But God spoke that name to your parents and says, that's the one. That's my Stephen. That's my Abby. That's my Brady. And he gave us these names. I always mess around with Brady, and I, and I, I tell him he's named after Tom Brady, and he can't stand it. <laughs> he does not like the Patriots, and I tell him that he really wasn't named after Tom Brady. That was just a name that just came to me and Megan. But I tell him that all the time that he was named after Tom Brady. It gets him mad. But that's the name that the Lord had given us. That's where those names come from. You know, we just watched the movie, and many of you probably have already watched it, or you've got it on your, your checklist for Christmas to watch The Christmas Carol with Ebenezer Scrooge in it. How many of you have ever seen it? it? Come on, everybody has seen Ebenezer Scrooge now. But, but we see... Ebenezer Scrooge, he's just an old, angry, ornery old man. He's greedy. He wants to keep everything for himself. He doesn't want to help nobody. Even his, his, uh, his sidekick there, he's, he's got him over there trying to heat up by a candle. And we know the story. He's visited by these three ghosts. Christmas past, Christmas present, Christmas future. And by the end of the movie, he is changed man he starts giving away money he goes out and he buys this big turkey for for tiny tim and he becomes tiny tim's best friend and disney plays it off they go off into the sunset happily ever after but he sent these ghosts came and showed him what his life was is and would would be like if he didn't change his way the angel came to Joseph in a dream and says, listen, we weren't there for the conversation, so I'm going to improvise probably a little bit of a conversation that probably happened. So listen, Joseph, Mary's pregnant. Yep, you're not the dad, but we, we need you to be his heavenly dad. We need you to, his name's going to be Jesus. You guys have been chosen, this is the Messiah, to raise him up here in Nazareth. So Joseph, you the man. Here on earth, you are the man to take care of the Messiah. His life, I guarantee you, was different after that encounter with the angel. He was different. And he, when he came to sense, he says, you know what? He took Mary to be his wife. Didn't consummate the marriage or anything until after the son was born. And if, I, if you would have asked Joseph... He would have said, that's my boy. That's my son. He would have never said, well, I'm just here to take care of him. He said, that's my boy. Sometimes a difficult situation is something that is working through, that God is working through to give you exactly what he wants you to become. Sometimes a difficult situation is something that God is using to get you to a place where he can put you in the place where he needs you to be for the furtherment of his kingdom. James 1, 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Here's that word joy. Consider it joy. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. Not lacking anything, church persevere there's something that god is trying to teach us when we face these trials 
in our lives. Did he ever one time tell us, you know what, if you accept me and you follow me, it's going to be easy. It's going to be a cakewalk. If you found that somewhere in the Bible, please let me know because I haven't found that yet. Because I, the Bible that I read, it says, you will have trials and tribulations. But through those, God's going to use those to bring you and put you in the place where he wants you to be. How do you think Joseph felt walking around in Nazareth there? You know, his wife's pregnant. They're not even had the ceremony yet. Do you think there's some ridicule that could have been happening? His reputation maybe could have been hurt and her reputation. But God did something amazing through them. Our second one we want to talk about this morning. The world is promised God's son. And we see that in verses 21 through 23. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. The son will be named Jesus. And if we take this name Jesus and look what it means, it means God saves. God saves. Jesus means God saves. He's the only one that can save his church is Jesus. He's the only one. There, there is no other way. Jesus is the one and only way. No matter what this world says, everybody's equal. No, they're not equal. You got Jesus, then you got everybody else who's the false teachers. Jesus is the only one that saves. He is our Lord and Savior. And you have to accept him to enter into eternity to be in heaven. That's what, God, that's what Jesus means. He will save his people from their sins. He, not anybody else, will save his people from their sins. And, he, and this is what the angel was telling Joseph here. He will save. Isaiah, the son will be. Now, I, I look back, and I've got some study notes here, that... Isaiah was about 700 and so years before this actually took place. So Isaiah is telling the people, listen, God saves. God is with us. This is going to happen. He's the Messiah. And they used to read these prophets in the synagogues all the time. So they should have known it inside and out. That when this happened, this was the sign that the Messiah is here. But we can't look at these people and condemn them because how many times do we see the writing on the wall and we overlook it? That we, we just look past it. That the, the word says, if you do this, this is going to happen. Or if this happens, if you'll, if you'll do this, this will happen. But we, like, we don't believe it. Why doesn't, why, why do, why we, why don't we see miracles like we saw in the Bible? Why don't we see the miracles here like we've seen in the Bible? Third world countries, they're seeing miracles what happened in the Bible. Because you know what? Their faith is strong. Their faith is strong. It's just maybe we have just got too laid back and comfortable. And here, Isaiah says, you know what? This is going to be the Messiah. This is God with us. He's going to be walking with us. His people, not just Israel, but humanity. It's not for just the Israelites. It's for all of humanity. Because everyone ever born was created in him, through him, and by him. Not just the Jewish people. Everyone. So he's for all people. All people. We just came through in November of election year. Oh, I dread election year. You don't see anything good on the news or commercials and stuff when you come through election years. But 
Politicians often make promises to their own people that they're going to do this, they're going to do this, they're going to make changes here, we're going to, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Some politicians do that. Some politicians do exactly what they say they're going to do. And right now, we're kind of mad because there's one politician that's doing exactly what he said he's going to do. And people are mad at him. But then there's some politicians that, 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 that where they promise all these things. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then they don't do nothing. But here in God's word, he says, listen, the son's going to be born. He's going to save his people from his sins. And here it is. He did exactly what he said he was going to do. Did exactly what he said. God promised to save the world way back in Genesis 3.15. If you go all the way back to Genesis 3.15, he says he's going to save the world. And this is what Genesis 3.15 says. I don't have it on the screen, so you have to either turn up in your Bible, get your phone, or look at it with me. But this is what it says. It says, And I will cause hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Can anybody tell me who he's talking to? He's talking to the serpent. He says, I, your offspring and her offspring are just going to be at it all the time. How many people in here like snakes? I didn't see one hand raised. How many people are scared of snakes? I'm putting both hands up. If most of the time, if you, go, if you see a snake, what, what happens? You try to stomp at it or something, right? Your heel is going for his head to try to crush his head. But if you miss, what happens? Most, if, if you look at all the historical medical records, when a snake bite happens, where does it usually happen? Around the foot. Somewhere between the ankle down is usually where a snake bite usually happens. Isn't that what the word just said? That his heel would crush your head and you were going to strike his heel? But he promised way back in Genesis that he's going to save this world. He's going to save the world. And something that the devil tried to use for bad and been evil, God later tried to, he used it for good. He took the golden serpent and had everybody look up at the golden serpent when all these snakes were biting people. As long as you look at it, you're going to be healed. And he says, I got you, devil, I got you. You can use whatever you want to, but I'm going to come out on top. And he's told us this, and we see that in Genesis 3.15, how he promised. We're going to move on to the third one. Mary gave birth to a son. Mary gave birth to a son. And we see in verses 24 and 25. It says, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. And he took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Joseph follows the Lord's commands. He doesn't deviate from them. He doesn't take and he doesn't do what he decided that he would think he was going to do is divorce her quietly. He did what the, the angel told him to do. He did exactly. He took her home. He was his wife. When she gave birth, she, he named him Jesus. He did exactly what the angel of the Lord had commanded him to do. And newsflash to those who don't believe. Mary, a virgin, gave birth to a son, to a baby boy, just as the angel had proclaimed and said that she would. Even Isaiah, he, said, he could probably say, you know what, I told you. I told you she was going to have a baby boy some 700 years before. And then once Jesus was born, and Joseph looked at him, he says, all right, yeah. I believe. Here's my baby boy. Here's this boy. You know, Amazon lets us track all of our deliveries wherever they go. You can, they give, when you send a package in 
with Amazon. They give you a tracking number, and you can watch that. They give you it's a little map, and you can see right where that little package goes all over the place. And it gets closer and closer to your home. You get excited. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever had one of these Amazon. How many has ever had an Amazon box come to your house? It's okay. It's, it's okay to raise your hand. Have you ever got one of those ones that sing to you? Like we see on the commercial, none of my boxes ever sing. And I've got plenty of them because Megan, that's where she does most of her shopping online. She, does, she likes to shop online. But I've never had one of those boxes that sing back to you. So you can, you can watch these packages as they go all over the place. And then when they get closer and closer, you get excited. You get excited. Oh, my stuff's just about here, especially if you got something good. You get excited. There's one package that Megan has been waiting on since the 1st of November. She checks the tracking number, and it's sitting in Greensboro. She's like, all right, it's almost here. Well, she checks it the next day. It's still in Greensboro. She checks it a week later. It's still in Greensboro. She goes, what's going on? It's still sitting in Greensboro. She checks it a few days later. It's in Maryland. Wait a minute, it was just in Greensboro, now it's in Maryland. So she checks it a, a, a couple of other days, it's in Missouri. Wait a minute, you're going the wrong way, it's supposed to be coming back this way. So then she sees it's in Greensboro. Church, here it is, nine days before Christmas, and she still hasn't received her package. It's still sitting in Greensboro. Well, the company ended up find, finally refunding her money. It, it could have got lost. It, it could have been countless different things. But she was anticipating that package being here because she was tracking it with that number. But when it never came, she was disappointed. But church, Mary and Joseph wasn't disappointed because the package that was promised to them and told them that was coming showed up. Amen. He was born. And Joseph, I probably, he said, Woo! He's here! And uh, probably the people, I don't know who, who was gathered here. You know, we read in Scripture sometimes, uh, the, it doesn't say any, some of the uh, uh, Gospels didn't even say anything about the wise men being there. But in all of our, look, the wise men are there. But I don't know who was there. But it, or maybe said, Well, what's his name going to be? I got his name. It was the father's responsibility to name the children. And he said his name was going to be Jesus. And Mary probably had some input in there too because our women do have input. She probably already said, you know what? Angel already told me what his name was going to be too. His name is going to be Jesus. She, he was like, what? Well, well, the angel told me the same thing. But he said his name. Is going to be Jesus. Jesus arrives to complete the promise in 1 John 4.14. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Church, we can testify to it. That he has been sent to be our savior of the world. He arrived some 2,000 years ago. He's still here today. He's still changing lives today. That's why it's great to celebrate his arrival. But guess what, church? We glorify him in his return. And that's what we're going to celebrate. We're looking to that eastern sky for his return to call his church home. But we got to do the work while we're here. We've got to share the gospel message. We got to reach out to the hopeless. We got to reach out to the broken and give them and show them there is a God who loves them. He was sent. That's why we celebrate Christmas. That's why I love Christmas so much. Because you know what? They have to sing about him. They have to sing about it. There's not one time that I've watched a, a movie on TV or I've heard uh, over at Carowinds the people singing. They have to sing about him. 
They have to. They can't go throughout and not sing about Jesus. It's a great time to share Jesus with others. So in closing this morning, I like Christmas gifts as much as the next person. I love to, to tear the wrapping off the package and see what's in, in it just as much as the next person. But I have found out as I have grown up that the real joy in Christmas is the children. You know, it's nothing if I don't receive a gift at all in Christmas season. But to see my kids really enjoy the Christmas season, just all aspects of it, that's where the true joy of Christmas for me comes into. Our children. We do the whole Santa Claus deal. We do the hanging of the stockings. We even got three little elves that sit on our around in our house we do all that but we also too celebrate our Lord that's why we put up our lights the first of November that's why we put up our Christmas trees that's why we put up our manger scene to celebrate the real reason behind the Christmas season it's not to to go out and get in debt for all these Christmas presents for different people. But we get to celebrate the birth of our Savior. But all these decorations and presents and trees are great. But it's even greater when everybody has to glorify Him. And to celebrate a season of Jesus. Celebrate the season of Jesus. Celebrating the birth of Jesus with our children is a good thing. But the son had to do more than to be born. He had to be born to go to the cross. He could have never went to the cross without being born. So we celebrate that. Thank the Lord he went to the cross instead of me. I don't have to endure that. I don't have to endure the pain that he had to suffer. He did it for me. But one day, woo, one day, he's going to be coming back in the eastern sky to call his church home. One day. And that's what we're looking forward to it's great to celebrate his birth but to celebrate his coming again stand with me church we've only got a couple more days until Christmas and this time of year it's easy to go out and to love and meet needs of people but the greatest need of all is the need of Jesus. I pray for boldness as we go through and we're going to be coming together with family and friends. Many of our family and friends don't know Jesus. It's a great opportunity to share with them. Not necessarily saying beating them over the head with your Bible, but love on them. Love on them. Maybe some of the things in the past that we've done, we, we've tried to beat them over the head with the Bible. But just wrap your arms around them and say, you know what? I love you. Jesus loves you. And it's a great thing to see what God will start to do in a family member's life. My brother's birthday is December 25th. This time of year, he feels left out because his birthday falls on Christmas. But the greatest gift that I received not too long ago was, I don't know if he's made that commitment to the Lord and Savior 
Jesus Christ just yet, but he's in church. His son and daughter has been baptized. Pretty sure mom and dad is going to be not too far behind. But when I get back home for Christmas this year, boy, what a celebration it's going to be. That we've been, I've been praying for my brother for a long time. And to see that the Lord is working in his life is amazing. Now, I've gotten to step up my prayer for my dad. Right now, I know of all of my family members except for my dad. He's accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. I'm not saying that's going to happen overnight, church, but continue to pray. Our God is still a God who answers prayers. Continue to pray. Continue to love on your family. And as we go in this Christmas season, it's a great opportunity to do so. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for being here with us this morning. Lord, as we move closer and closer to the Christmas day, and Lord, and we celebrate this day to celebrate you coming to this earth, being born in human form. Lord, that we, we, we take time and we celebrate you, the true meaning of this Christmas holiday. And Lord, and as we come together with our family and our friends and we get to see people we may haven't seen all year, that we just love on. There might be some hard feelings from throughout the year or the last time we met, but Lord, we show grace. We show love. The grace and love that you so graciously poured out upon us. So Lord, as we go throughout the rest of our day and we start another week, give us the boldness to stand firm for you. And give us the courage to step out in faith. Let us continue to be the hands and feet wherever we go. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.